Keeping the Christian year through a pandemic undoubtedly encourages us to think about church differently. So what is Ascension Tide saying to us? Ascension Day itself can sometimes feel like a Christian festival looking for a congregation. Relatively few churches are dedicated to the Ascension and the habit of keeping the theme on the following Sunday robs it of attention. For most of my ordained life I associate Ascension Day with deanery or ecumenical services because this has been the Church of England solution for a Christian festival looking for a congregation. This year, however, amidst worldwide COVID-19, the search for a congregation has taken on an entirely new meaning. It has certainly been painful not using our churches for congregational worship, nor keeping them open for quiet space and private prayer, particularly at a time when the English public need their church just like they need their National Health Service. Undeterred, our parish clergy and lay ministers, discombobulated by unprecedented circumstances, have gone to look for a congregation beyond the sheepfold, like the good shepherds they are. Firstly, contacting people by telephone and email and participating in all the local shopping schemes, prescription delivering and neighbourly caring going on in their communities tackling the emotional downsides of self-isolating, especially for the elderly, sick and poor, young families and those with special needs, and burying the dead with dignity in the most difficult circumstances. Surveys suggest that many people hope that rediscovering intergenerational kindness in stressful times will change our society beyond this crisis for the better. Whether it will become fairer is less certain because in truth we are not all in this together in quite the same way. Secondly, and more dramatically though, clergy have discovered the virtual congregation. As we overcome the technical and emotional obstacles to stream and video the Eucharist, daily prayer and reflections, like the one I'm doing now, we sceptically wonder who we are reaching anxious that our face-to-face -face congregations in church might never come back, which is a real concern, requiring serious attention in due course. Meantime, we are catching a glimpse of another congregation, one we might never have imagined. Initial findings suggest that take-up by parishioners and individuals ranges from the encouraging to remarkable. Depending on your technology and curiosity, it's now possible to track how many hits virtual church receives, who tunes in live, for how long, who catches up later, how many viewers, where from, how many recommends, how many people exploring church website, getting in touch by email. The data is fascinating. This is beyond marketing because people have other attractive options for their attention. After all, how many people pop their head round the church door on a Sunday to listen to a few minutes of the service? Paradoxically, in the virtual church, the public invites us into their space. So the discipleship and nurture questions are, what do we do next, as we hopefully move beyond the immediate crisis? Ascension Tide nudges us in the right direction. Soon to be Archbishop Stephen Cottrell describes the ascension not as a departure, but as an arrival. Jesus is no longer confined by space and time. The Holy Spirit is arriving for everyone, for all time. It is to our advantage, says Jesus, that I go so that the Holy Spirit will come. Artists struggle how to picture the ascension. We have all smiled at medieval paintings and stained glass windows with Jesus rising heavenward above the gaze of the disciples, his feet disappearing into clouds, the footprints in the sand beneath. When I was a child, the Paschal candle at Eastertide was dramatically extinguished after the Gospel on Ascension Day, highlighting the departure. But nowadays it remains in the sanctuary, lighting the arrival of the Holy Spirit, until the evening of Pentecost, when it's taken to its familiar location beside the font to be used at baptisms. Pentecost is the time of the Holy Spirit and mission 
before the return of the Messiah. It is not for us to know the times and the seasons, because God's economy will be revealed to us. Clothed with power from on high, we are witnesses of these things. So the angel's challenge is for us too. Don't stand gazing heavenwards, get on with it. The Acts of the Apostles tells a remarkable story of our church's beginnings, of a faith in search of followers, of apostles in search of a congregation. Along the first century way, it tells of big numbers, small numbers, success and failure, enormous risk-taking and stupidity and wickedness. It's a terrific we read. We are in chapter 2020 of the Acts of the Apostles. Looking back, what will people say of our generation? Faced by church decline, greater emphasis on personal discipleship and growing congregations numerically is clearly required. However, this ascension tide, the potential character and location of new disciples and congregations are challenging our assumptions about mission and ministry. A wise father of Lincoln, 13th century Bishop Grossetest, reminds us that God is not absent in these challenging times. God, he says, has waited patiently for us and has brought us to where we are. As Christians, we are beloved of God, and as we love the world and each other more generously, we catch a glimpse of God's transforming vision for our world. <laughs>